What is up food fans? It's Bobby and today we are making steak meal prep with two healthy side dishes because I'm fixing to make all my meals for next week today. So we are making braised short rib in a vegetable and red wine sauce, roasted acorn squash with a maple and cayenne glaze, and crispy green beans in a lemony tangy vinaigrette. So hook a brother up and subscribe to my channel because I have new videos every Friday morning and I want you, my fellow foodies, to be the first ones to see them. Let's get our meal prep on. Now check out these Fred Flintstone worthy bone in short ribs in front of me. These are perfect for cooking low and slow in that pot right there. They're gonna fall apart. They're gonna be melting in your mouth. I'm gonna be drooling all over the camera and they're so good. So the first thing we have to do is season these guys pretty aggressively with salt and pepper. Give it a good pinch of salt all over and then hit it with some pepper. Salt and beef are BFF. So season this guy aggressively because the salt actually makes the beef taste more beefy. It just brings it out in a major way. Now the first step in a successful braise is caramelizing the heck out of these short ribs. I want them brown and crusty. And to do that, I'm preheating the largest pot known to mankind over medium high heat. To my pot, I'm gonna add a good tablespoon of veggie oil. Now, if you preheated your pot properly, it's gonna talk to you and tell you, hey buddy, you did a good job by making this noise right here. What's that? Oh, well, thank you, I appreciate it. Let's get the rest of the meat in the pot. Dude, already it's smelling legit in here. My carnal instincts are going into overdrive. Can you guys hear me over the orchestra of deliciousness going on there? We're basically gonna caramelize it for two minutes on all four sides until it's the crustiest looking piece of beef you've ever seen. Let's give the meat a flip. Yes, look at that, y'all. Hashtag crustification, that is legit. Two more minutes, then somebody remind me and I'll flip it again. Let's evacuate the dance floor. You guys, get in here and check this out. Super duper crusty and golden brown, exactly what we wanted. Now before we move on, I'm gonna pour off a little bit of the excess fat here because we definitely don't need it. Now guys, check out the bottom of the pot. You see that right there? Now those fancy chefs, they call that fond, you know? But us home cooks, you know, we, we just call that crusty burnt down bits. That guys has tons of flavor. So we're gonna cook all our vegetables and everything in that. In this bowl, I have onions, carrots, and celery, the base to any good stew. I'm gonna add that to the hot pot. I'm gonna season this with half a teaspoon of salt and a few cracks of pepper. I'm gonna cook this for about five minutes until the vegetables soften up a little bit. Let's add three cloves of garlic and cook it for one more minute. Let's get this puppy to level nine of deliciousness by grabbing a teaspoon of dried thyme and then two heaping tablespoons of tomato paste. It's also gonna add such a depth of flavor to our braise. Next up, I'm gonna grab me a bottle of three buck chuck from Trader Joe's and add a good half a cup into the pot. So remember those sticky burnt on bits earlier? Well, the wine is gonna release, release the Kraken of deliciousness. Now, once again, them fancy chefs, they would call that deglazing the pan. I just call it releasing the sticky bits. Now with one fell swoop, I'm gonna get the beef back in the pot and you can see the wine almost all evaporated. Then nestle it down there into its new home. And finally, I have some beef broth. You could also use chicken stock, veggie stock, or in a pinch, you can even use water because there is flavor up the yin yang in there. Gonna add it to the pot so it almost covers the beef. Our one pot wonder has come to a boil. I'm gonna reduce it down to a simmer, slap my big old lid on there, and then move it to the back burner. Somebody spot me. One, two, three. Ah! Perfect. Now this guy's gonna simmer away for about two hours. In the meantime, we can either take a nap which sounds enticing, or we can make the two healthy side dishes, the first one being our roasted acorn squash. Now the safest way I know to cut a squash is to take your knife and insert it right here, and then grab your rolling pin and just tap down on the knife. See, and that works perfectly. Because remember kids, fingers are expensive. Acorn squash, not so much. And use a spoon to scoop out the inside. Now we need to make the glaze to smear all over the inside of our roasted acorn squash. In the bowl, I have one and a half tablespoons of light brown sugar. To that, I'm gonna add an equal part of maple syrup, and then one teaspoon of cumin and a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, a teaspoon of olive oil, and just mix it all up so it's nice and combined. Let's move our squash to a sheet tray. And this time of year, I will take squash any way I can get it. So do me a favor, leave a comment below and let me know your favorite fall and winter squashes. For me, it's probably butternut squash, but I wanna know yours. And then drizzle our glaze from the heavens all over the squash. 
and the middle is kind of like a pocket of deliciousness that's just gonna capture all the flavors throughout the baking process. And the last thing we need to do is hit it up with a little sprinkle of salt. Now these guys go in a 425 degree oven for about 45 minutes until they are well caramelized on top and the house smells pretty much amazing. Now I don't know what kind of mushy green beans y'all are eating, but mine are crispy, delicious, and when tossed in the lemony vinaigrette, they are money. So in front of me, I have a pot of water that's boiling. And before I add the green beans, I'm gonna season it with about a teaspoon of salt because that's a great way to season the green beans while they're cooking. Add these to the pot. Now here's the deal. I'm only gonna boil them for two minutes. As soon as they're done, I'm gonna prepare an ice water bath to stop the cooking process. That's the way they cook through, but stay crispy and have that bright, vibrant green color. Let's strain the green beans and then plunge it directly into the ice bath. Now the reason your beans might be mushy is because you're overcooking them. Even though I cooked it for only two minutes, if I don't stop the cooking process in this ice bath immediately, they're gonna be mushy. They're very fickle, kind of like me on a bad day. So let them sit in here for one or two minutes until they cool down completely. Then we'll drain them off and put them in a bowl. To make our green beans pop it like it's hot, we are gonna up the flavor and make a lemony citrusy vinaigrette. So I'm gonna grab a lemon here and zest it first because you guys know that I'm officially obsessed with zest. I'm gonna cut the lemon in half and use the juice. And I don't know about you guys, but I seem to always have a paper cut in my finger, so one of these citrus juicers is a lifesaver. Next, go in with half a teaspoon of Dijon or stone ground mustard, a tiny pinch of salt, a couple cracks of fresh pepper, and then grab my favorite ingredient in the world, extra virgin olive oil, and do a couple tablespoons. So basically we're making like the simplest, easiest vinaigrette ever, but it's gonna be super citrusy and very lemony because I want the flavors to really pop on the green beans and make them come to life. Pour your vinaigrette on top of the green beans. Add a couple tablespoons of chopped and toasted walnuts, and then a good tablespoon of fresh chopped parsley. And then give it a good mix up. I love that bright, vibrant green color that just screams healthy. It's super citrusy and has a great bite. And if you think about it, the meat is rich, the squash is sweet, so this citrus is gonna cut through all of that, which I planned, pat on the back, let's move on. All right, y'all, it's been an hour and check out these roasted acorn squash. Is that caramelization nation or what? These little caramelized bits and edges are my favorite. Now, if you're not sure they're done, just break out your little buddy, the paring knife, and stab the squash. If it goes in and out with relative ease, it's good hanging out for dear life, it needs 10 more minutes in the oven. That's perfect. All we have to do is wait for the meat now, which is smelling outrageous, and then we'll finish. Hey. What? I was just making sure they're ready, which they are. Get in that pot, look at that deliciousness. I'm gonna grab one of these guys, perfectly braised. Fred Flintstone said, what? So if you're not sure if the meat's done, all you have to do is take a couple forks and just pull the meat a little bit kind of like pulled pork or barbecue pulled beef. It's really, really tender, but still has a nice bite to it. And what we have left in the pot is our sweet, sweet elixir of braising liquid. If you wanna make this into a sauce, just boil it over medium high heat with the lid off until it's nice and saucy. Foodie friends, it is time to build our steak meal prep containers for the week. So I'm gonna grab a nice piece of roasted squash, tuck that in the corner, then grab a short rib, and you can see I took the bones off the short rib. They're just gonna fit in my container that much easier. Okay, tuck that in there. And then finally, some green beans. And that looks so good, so balanced. Let me build all five and we are done. All five are done and this looks so good that I'm just gonna have to steal a bite from tomorrow night's dinner because I can't wait. Let me cut a piece of the steak. Oh, it just is melting through the meat. Look at that, guys. Yum. You guys, not only is the steak so tender and moist, but the squash is nutty and spicy and sweet. And those green beans are crunch-tastic and lemony and bright and just cut through the richness of this entire meal. This is balanced. This is healthy. I'm gonna love this every single day next week. If y'all want the recipe, I know you do. It's below in the description box. Check it out. Also, subscribe to my channel. New videos every Friday, almost always meal prep. And if you wanna see more, leave a comment below. Let me know what you wanna see. Let me know what the recipe is and I will always hook you up. If you wanna see some more meal prep recipes, check out the videos below, but I will see you next week. Until then, hashtag keep on cooking.